February 7th, 2014's weekly wrap-up. And what we released this week was Step 21 of the Harmony Course, and it is called Motion of Two Voices. Now, up to this point, what I've been doing is working with your ability to learn how to hold on to your notes and your relationships intervallically of one note to all the other 12 tones. That's how notes relate to each other. But what this clip is about, it's about how notes move with each other. And there are actually names that go along with the motion, and those names are similar motion, parallel motion, contrary motion, oblique motion. Now there's actually another one called contrary motion. I didn't talk about that in this clip. I wanted to work with those four first to get you going. And this is about not only becoming a harmony singer yourself, but being able to understand how to arrange so you can arrange different parts. What I promised in this course all along was is I was not only going to teach you how to become a great harmony singer, but teach you how to arrange four different types of vocal uh, situations. And incidentally, learning how to become a good vocal arranger will make you a way better harmony singer. Because you're going to understand and have thoughts in your mind about how to create and be very creative and not just do the, okay, you take the top part, you take the bottom part, and you take the middle. Not that that's not part of it, because it is. And lots of natural harmony singers never take it any farther than that, but honestly, there's so much more than that. And uh, as we get from, right now we're working on two voices, but as we move from two voices to three-part harmony to four-part harmony and beyond, and I'll explain what beyond is the day that we get there, this is all part of the journey. So, step 21 I'm excited about, can you tell? And the reason why I'm so excited is because we're moving out of, the, if you've been practicing, if you're on the site and you've been moving through the course, well, everything that I've done with you up to this point isn't so much about arrangement of harmony or even explaining how the harmony really works so, so much. It's just been about, can you hold your part? Can you sing a root, a third, and a fifth of a major and a minor chord? Do you understand the intervallic relationships between one note and the twelve and all the twelve tones in, in our music? Those are the things that we've been working up to now. Very important, absolutely a necessity for us to get things happening to make you a better singer, but now we start to move into this next step of understanding how harmony really works. And for this week's musical tip of the week, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit more about how to handle certain letters in relationship to words and songs. And uh, the I is a great one to talk about. Anything that has an I in it, fly, sky, pi, die, try, chi, anything that has that I sound in it, there is a way to handle that and there's a way not to handle that. If you ride too much into the I sound, they're a throat, it's a throat killer. And what will happen is it'll crinch your throat and it won't feel good. So all eyes, the easiest way to approach them is to sing an ah and end quickly with an e. Do you always do that in every style of music? No. You don't always do everything, anything in every style of music. But a good general rule is to handle the eye the way I'm talking about. So what am I talking about? I want you to sing this. I want you, let's take an, uh, just a simple note and anywhere that's comfortable in your range. I'll just sing about here. I'll sing, ah. Now I'm singing, ah, A-H. Now if, and if I end that quickly with an E, ah, it sounds like I. But the difference is when I'm singing that, it feels much smoother, a lot more comfortable on my throat. So if I'm singing, I, I'm thinking that. You try it. In virtual land, Try it again. Now, purposefully, sing I. Sing I. When you sing I, what does that feel like in your throat? Not good, right? Eyes are throat killers. You don't want to use the eyes that way. They will always take the quality of the sound away and make it more uncomfortable. So if you were singing like, fly me to the moon. If I was singing, 
Fla. I'm thinking F L A H. Fly. And then I let the E come in. I don't even sing it. I don't even go. Fly. I don't even do that. I just end it right off the end. Can you split it? You can. Sinatra actually does sometimes, uh, uh, as far as singing that way, and country singers do sometimes. Either way, you're still writing the ah most of the time, and then you're going to an eval. You're not either way. You're not singing on a tight I that will take away the quality of your tone and simultaneously hurt your voice. And if you use enough of those during the evening, without you even knowing it, you will be wearing your voice out a little bit more than you need to. And these little tricks that I'm talking about, not only do they make you sound better, not only do they help you sing better in tune with better quality, but they also save your voice because always remember that the vocal folds are a resisting band. And yes, you have to sing with support, and yes, you have to do certain things about putting things in the nasal and mouth resonators and all of those things that teachers are always talking about. But this is a good little tip to understand that if you handle all eyes with an ah ending with a quick E, it'll help your voice in many ways. See you guys next time.